Anything? I'm dying, yes. Oh. Good morning, everybody. I haven't said anything yet because we've all been sleeping, but we're here and we'll Yay! backtrack and we'll keep you updated. I think that's going to be upside down. Oh my gosh, things are crazy. It's going to be great. Or was I just like... What are we doing right now? We're giving them hell. Guys, what are we most excited about? Marching. <laughs> I don't know. Genetics. This side says fight for your lives before some or before <laughs> it's someone else's job. We love a and then this side. <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> Remember their names and it's all of the victims' names from uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas and Santa Fe. And then the list goes on and no 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 right. Recently the middle school in my community was shaken by a thirteen year old gun boy. That's right, a gun boy. Right after this happened, I decided I wanted change. But some people told me it was too early to talk politics. But I'm going to talk politics on behalf of the children that ran from their armed classmates. Some people told me that it's their right to own a gun. I say own as many guns as you want, but keep them out of the reach of your children. Some people told me that I'm too young to know what I believe in. I say 13 years old is too young to be shot seven times in your middle school. this a driving issue in the communities. Moms Demand Action, MASK, and my organization, Indivisible Evansville, are all spearheading initiatives to force our government and representatives to listen and respond to our concerns. As you can see here today, the local students who organized as a result of Parkland shootings at Marjorie Stone and Douglas have stayed motivated and continue to work in the community. The first march was a huge success. Today we have a huge success and we will continue to organize events to keep the young active and motivated because they will be the drivers of this change that we're seeking. It was a normal school day on May 25th, walking to class with a good friend of mine, something we had done all school year. At the beginning of my chemistry class, a code yellow had been announced, meaning people could not leave the building. Most people thought nothing of it, since my high school is across the street from a jail. We were prone to thinking that maybe it was just another escapee. Then it changed to a code orange and no one could leave the classroom. The atmosphere slightly changed in my class, everyone wondering what was going on. Rumors were swirling around that there was a shooting taking place at one of the middle schools about five minutes or so away. I began tearing up knowing that it had reached us the unimaginable. That was nothing in comparison to hearing the fear in my principal's voice as he announced a code red lockdown and to assume Alice positions. Everything suddenly changed. My teachers were barricading the doors. I was being crammed against my classmates. I was going, I was gripping to my friends' hands, seeing their faces crying. That was the day I experienced true fear. I saw true fear in my friends' face as they cried and feared for their lives, not knowing what was to come. I experienced true fear as I texted everyone I was close to and I love you. I felt true fear as the ATF men came into my classroom, pointing their semi-automatic weapons in our faces, forcing us to throw our hands in the air. I will never forget the enormous hug I gave my parents after 
they came and picked me up from school after three hours being locked in the same classroom. I will never forget how thankful my grandma told me she was when she found out I was not in immediate danger. I am here today because 12 to 14 year olds at Noblesville West Middle School had to hide and run for their lives. I am here because a 13 year old girl was shot seven times, seven times in her own classroom. I am here for my community. I'm here today because something needs to be done. Yes. We're here to speak for those who can't. Those who can't speak of the trauma and the fear they have endured. Those who are too young to vote. Those who are dead because of bullets. The kids at Columbine had no voice. Sandy Hook had no voice. The 32 dead at Virginia Tech had no voice. Parkland has no voice. Neither does Great Mills, Marysville, Townville, North Park, Aztec, Palmdale, Santa Fe, Marshall County, Noblesville, or any of the other people dead because of gun violence on the streets. I'm only 17 and I have no voice. I can't vote. I have no ballot, therefore no voice. You have a voice. The people in the convention have bigger voices. They need to know that if they prioritize money over guns, we will vote them out. Thank you. Woo! Like practicing it and all that, it turned out really good. Oh, when you said friends, I know. Yeah, she literally did friends like every time. I forgot. <laughs> it's okay, I it's okay. I say that. She goes, Kathy, my friends is. Will you introduce yourself to my vlog channel? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy Payne with Indivisible. Woo! <laughs> so like, I was at Wendy's and I was in the drive-thru. Oh, excuse me, we were at Wendy's. Um, I was giving the money to the guy and like, um, he looks at me and I'm like, why did he look at me for so long? And then when like he gave the card back, he was like, your eyes are incandescent. <gasps> oh, and I was like, <laughs> they're really bright. We, we, pull up, we pull up and I go, wow, I'm impressed that he knows that word. Yeah. That was impressive. Was, wow, Riley. I'm what he will say. Um, he was like, that's smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Okay guys, what did we just do? We just I look busted. I think that's a look. I like this. Oh. <laughs> we just sang the national anthem. Yeah, we like randomly sang the national anthem, but like it's fine. Like, those girls next to us were like, can we sign you a record deal? Hey Riley, I'm 16, right? I am a junior. I, um, I spoke. <laughs> and it was great. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Rhonda, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Mama Rhonda. Hello. Hi, Mama Rhonda. Hello. We love her. And I have the honor of driving these wonderful girls Yeehaw. to their march. Kennedy, introduce yourself and tell me about Hi. your day. Um, I'm Kennedy. I'm 17 and I'm a senior. Oh, she's old. I know. We marched around Evansville. It was great. <laughs> so, <laughs> got cussed out by a few of them, but, but it's okay. It's fine. It's whatever. Mm -hmm. My name is Arden. I'm 16 and I'm a junior. Day. For our lives. Uh, we sang the national anthem. That was cool. Yes. Yeah. My favorite part about the day was. Can you introduce yourself? Oh, sorry. You asked too many questions. I'm Grace. <laughs> car sick but that's like not important i exit the stall riley enters the stall i'm like washing out my mouth in the sink and this woman starts talking to me and like she's really talking to me like she's talking and she's talking to me and we're so close and like i don't know her and she's like my husband wants to take his the brain out of his head and play with it and i used to work at child care but now i work in the nursing home my husband thinks i shouldn't talk to people and approach them like this and in my head i'm like riley come out of the stall <laughs> so riley came out she freaked me out. 
and she hugged me, although I just peed, so you hadn't even washed your hands yet. She yeah. hugged and kissed us. Yeah. It's just like very interesting because like we don't know this lady, but she like kissed us, but like yeah. it's whatever. Okay, we'll cut it out. I don't know how to feel about it. Is she okay? okay? Yeah, we don't know, but it's fine. But we love her anyway. We do. She's a great gal. We love you, Patty. Bye. We are not afraid of the NRA!